formulas we learned yesterday? There were five. That's correct. Okay, you need to use two of them to answer these questions. Go ahead, warm up. I'm going to have you guys put the answers up on the board in a few minutes. Try them. They are not on your big idea work. All right. Please. Check. All right, we need to focus now. We need to bring it. Okay. Let's check our answers. For the top one, you have to be careful. The 80,000 is the ending amount, not the starting amount. So you have to figure out whatever this base to the power is. I think it's like 4.29. And then P is multiplied by that parentheses. So once you evaluate this, you just divide it to the other side. And that's where we're getting like that 18,000 from. Um, and you shouldn't have to round in your calculator until the very end. So you should have it down to the exact tiny there. Um, and I underlined in both of these what's like the key phrases that you're looking for that tells you what formula to use. Um, because it said compounded co quarterly. Because it said compounded quarterly, you know it's the compound interest formula that's not PERS. Only if it says continuously do we use PERS. Um, and then percent of its current value tells you to use this guy, the y equals a times b to the x. Remember, we start with 100, we add or subtract our percent from there. So because it's depreciating, you take away 15%, which is where that 0.85 is coming from. And you guys will know you made a mistake if you put the wrong percentage there. Like if you put 0.15 and you take it to the fifth power times 80,000, you're going to get the truck's worth like $3 after five years, which doesn't make sense. So you know you did it wrong. Okay. Questions on these? Review from 4.1. No. All right, great. So let's talk about logs, shall we? Four two. I'm still doing the calculator, Ryan. There. The calculator. Yeah. Can you take the calculator right now? Okay. All right. All right. Logarithmic functions. How many of you guys remember doing logs before? One person, one person learned logs, and now it's for two. You guys learned logs before. Well, how many of you did logs before? Okay. How many of you feel like you really know what a log is? Okay. A tree? No. Not, not that kind of log. All right. What are logs? This is 4-2. Logs are logarithmic functions, which are inverses of exponential functions. So why do we have a log? We have a log to allow us to solve for an exponent. So a time in real life where you want to solve for an exponent is maybe you want to figure out how much time your money's in the bank to earn a certain amount. If you think about that compound interest formula, time is in the exponent. You need to be able to solve for that exponent. So that's what we use logarithmic functions for. The most important thing, and we're going to practice this a lot today, that you need to know about a logarithmic function is how to write a log as an exponent and an exponent as a log. Please, please, please write that down. So I would read this log base A of X equals Y, and it is the inverse of the exponential function X equals A to, well, basically one, I guess I should say, X equals A to the Y. So this one we call logarithmic form, that one we call exponential form. Less talking while I'm talking. Great. Okay. Um, our exponential equations had some restrictions. The base had to always be a positive number, which makes x always a positive number. You still see those same restrictions there. Also, in an exponential equation, your base can't be 1, because 1 to any power is always just 1. It doesn't make an exponential curve. So we have those same restrictions on our logarithmic statements as well. What I want you to notice is when we write something in logarithmic form, the exponent is what's alone. So writing something as a log allows us to solve for that x. That's what we're trying to do here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to practice today is just how to write logs as exponents and exponents as logs. It's kind of getting used to transferring between the two. <laughs> he put it away. That was the right choice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 2 to the 10th power equals 1,024. 
I want to write that exponential statement in logarithmic form. All right, so when we write it in logarithmic form, the base of your exponent will be the base of your log. If you don't pay attention today, the next two weeks are going to be a struggle for you. Pay attention. Okay. What's the base of that exponent? Two. That's the base of the log. When we write a logarithmic statement, what are we trying to get alone? The exponent, 10 is by itself. And then the number that we're left with is what you're going to be taking the log of. Okay? So log base 2 of 1,024 equals 10. We're going to do the one right below it together as well. Log base 2 of 64 equals 6. I want to write that in exponential form, so we're going to go the other way. The base of the log is the base of the exponent. So what's my base of my exponent? 2. Where can I find the exponent if it's a log statement? On the outside, what's it by itself? 6 equals 64. And then some quick mental math, you can make sure that's a reasonable answer. Okay, I want you guys to try the other four at the top up there with your groups. And let's try this. Let's try to only talk about those four problems while we try to work on those four problems. Go ahead. Let's try it. Let's try it. Why do you make it harder? Why do you make it harder? Not harder. Not harder. Not harder. All right. Let's talk about 9 to the negative 1 half power equals 1 third. It's log base 9 of equals good. Uh, the next one, log base A of P equals perfect. Okay, the bottom two are written in exponential form. What's the base? 9. It does kind of look like a G, though. I agree. To the 1 half equals... Three. Three. Good. Um, what about the last one? W to the V equals U. All right. Questions there? Writing logs is exponents, exponents is logs. Great. Moving on. Evaluating a log. We're trying to find log base 3 of 9. Okay. Let's say I'm making an equation. Set it equal to X. We're trying to figure out what does it evaluate to? What does it equal? So we're going to solve for x. We're going to use the same property. We're going to write it with exponents. What does this look like if I write it with exponents? 3 to the x equals 9. And then these are meant to be problems you should be able to do in your head. 3 to what power gives you 9? The log evaluates to 2. Okay? So when you see a log, and guys, these are great um, things to kind of think about if you're taking like the ACC. I think we're going to mention that earlier. When you see a log, the log means find the exponent. So this means 3 to what exponent will give you 9? That's what it evaluates to. Or 9 to what exponent will give you 1 third? Now that one's a little tricky, so I'm going to write it out. 9 to what power gives me 1 third? Okay, let's pretend it's not a 1 third, it's just a 3. 9 to what power would give you 3? Uh, not negative 2. Okay, 9 to the 1 half because the 1 half is the same as what? Uh, square root. Yeah, so 9 to the, the square root of 9 gives me 3. 9 to the 1 half gives me 3. But the 3 is in the denominator. So what kind of exponents will move something to the denominator? Negative. So your answer is negative 1 half. Yeah. Negative 1 half. Okay, let's try the next one. 1 half to what power gives me 32? Again, might be easier to think about it as a 2 first. 2 to what power will give you 32? Not 6, close. 5. 2 to the 5th power gives me 32, but it's not a 2, it's a 1 half. So what do you think I need to adjust? Make it negative 5. Negative exponents will make, give me a reciprocal. Are we just supposed to like know that? Yes. You're supposed to know powers of 2. Now, when we get to, I think it's section 4.3 or 4.4, 4, 
if you have weird numbers here that aren't nice pretty ones like this, where you can do in your head, like let's say I had log base four of seven. Four to what power gives you seven? That's not what you're going to do in your head. There is a property for that that you can use your calculator for. We'll talk about that later. And you can eventually use it for these problems. All right, let's have the last one. This means seven to what power gives me one? Zero. Yeah. Okay. Next. All right. We're going to try these ones. Log base 2 of x equals 3. Just write it as exponents. Are you guys seeing a trend with what we're doing here? Yeah. When in doubt, if you have a log problem, write it with exponents and it will more than likely help. So 2 to the third equals x. And look at that magic math. x is already alone. My answer is x equals 8. Okay, log base z of 125 equals 3. z to the third equals 125. And then how do I solve for z? Cube root, or you could use what power on both sides? What's the same as a cube root? One third, one third. So you could do the one third power. It's good to know that, guys, because what if it said like fourth root or fifth root and you have a basic calculator, you're not going to be able to do that. So you need to know that when you're taking a root, like a fifth root, it's the same as the one fifth power. Or a seventh root is the same as a one seventh power. You can always do an exponent. So either way, we get z equals five. Okay, you guys try the two at the bottom with your groups. <laughs> All right. So we get negative one third or negative three for the first one. Three to the third power will give you twenty-seven. You gotta make it negative to get that one twenty-seven. Right with the exponents. So we get WB. Three to the zero power gives you one. And then you have a quadratic, it's equal to zero. Factor it. Use quadratic formula to get stuff. Okay. Questions on those? No? No. Okay. Great. Can I move it? All right. There are two special kinds of logs that you need to know about. A common log and a natural log. And these are the ones that are going to be the buttons in your calculator. Even on a red calculator, you're going to have these buttons. So on the left side of your calculator, you should see the word log. And you should see a natural log, LN. Log and LN right below it. So a log without a base, like log of 1,000 at the top there, is a base of 10. It is called a common log because it is the most type of common log that's used, powers of 10. Are we listening? Powers of 10. So if you don't see a base, we put a 10 there. It's kind of like what square root. When we see a square root, it's a root 2. We just never see the 2 because it's the most common root. We just know it's a 2. So um, 10 to what power gives you 1,000? 3. Did you guys, do you guys remember learning about like the number of zeros is the power of 10? Did you ever learn that when you did powers? Like in middle school? So if you did like 1,000 has 3 zeros, so it's 10 to the 3rd. Um, 10,000 has 4 zeros, so it's 10 to the 4th. That's a quick way to think about it. Um, if you see ones that are decimals, log of 0 0.01, so log base 10, 0 0.01, how would you read that number? It's one what? Uh, 1%, 1 percent, 1 one hundredth. Okay, so I'm going to write it like that. It's 1 one hundredth. I think it's easier to evaluate now if I write it like that. 10 to what power gives me 1 over 100? Negative 2. 10 squared gives me 100. It's got to be a negative because it's in the denominator. If you see a natural log, ln, it means log base e. So I have log base e of e to the fourth, which means e to what power gives me e to the fourth? Fourth. And you're going to see this is one of our log properties that we're going to come across quite often. If you have a log base and inside that log an exponent of the same base, they're essentially just going to cancel and give you that exponent. Okay. So if I see like natural log of 1 over e, I can think of it as log base e of 1 over e, which means e to what power gives me 1 over e? Negative 
One, right? Because e to the first power gives me e, but it's in the denominator. Natural log of two means e to what power gives me two? Is two a common power of e that you know? Probably not, right? Because e is that number 2.718. It's irrational. So this is an example of, an, of one you would need your calculator for. If you want to try it, just hit ln and then 2 and equals. And you should get 0.693. Is that right? If I get a few decimal places. Okay. And then you can always see if it's reasonable. Do e to that power and see that you get approximately 2 if you want to check it. All right. The last six problems today are on your big idea worksheet. They are the top half of that worksheet, the back side of 4-1. Um, I want you guys to try them. I'm going to have groups put them up on the board. Question. Yes. Was it hard to concentrate because your group was talking while I was explaining it? Yeah, I could imagine that that would be frustrating. Okay. Answers. Check these three before I flip it. Uh, no. I decided not to. You can put the next three on the board, sure. I'll let you put the next three on the board. Okay. We'll put these ones on the board. I won't be here on Okay. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. That's all.